<laughs> somebody wrote this order. Um, you can just see uh, um, uh, that uh, mm -hmm. in some questions you might need a little bit more of the, uh, uh, of the um, uh, updating. Oh, okay, this is my family, just to let you know. Uh, this, is, uh, this is on the top left corner, Zara Stefan. Uh, these are uh, our future engineers uh, because at the moment they're doing a lot of reverse engineering. Uh, the, the, uh, my wife, uh, Diana, she's trying to prevent that majority of time, but we are failing miserably. Uh, and despite the cuteness, these, these are dangerous people, but we love them big time. So the question is, what is a kite? Uh, yeah, guys, uh, everybody who is on the chat section and the comment section, make sure you type in there, uh, what is the kite? Uh, we're going to have a couple of questions for you because we want to make sure that you guys are still alive after this, you know, you know so, so please do write in the comment section, what is a kite? And um, how would you define it? I'm in saying it's a flying machine. Flying machine, I love it. I love it. <laughs> that. Yeah, this is, I love it, the flying machine. That's correct. It is uh, some kind of uh, 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 creation. But what else is there? Kite flies, uh, 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 okay. It's some kind of material which flies. That's correct. So I'm my curious. friends, uh, it is something like that. And uh, yes. now uh, here are the requirements. Let me just tell you, you can do 90% of this honor today. In other words, you can get a badge. And to motivate you guys, to motivate you today, uh, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna just for a few moments um, uh, show you something. You see, do you see this? This is uh, 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 a 70th year anniversary pin for the, um, for the uh, World Part Funded Day on the 19th of September. And I, ha I have three pins for those uh, who send us uh, uh, in the end the kite they build because that's one of the requirements. So three pins are ready uh, and, we, uh, and also that goes, uh, let's do this. Uh, uh, one goes to the best bridge that he was built uh, by uh, which Pam wants. One goes to the best kite and the one who is going to go to the adventure award. So guys, there's something for you to work to. If you look at the requirements, here it is. Okay. Where were kites first made? Important question. Also three, you know, three important uh, people who actually helped us and how, uh, um, who helped us in developing kites, but also in science, how the kites are being used. Number two is name some of the ways that, you know, the kites are being used today. Explain briefly how kites fly, which is going to be quite fun, by the way, just to let you know, because uh, it, explaining how things fly is just really hard. Um, define the following terms. You can see the list, which is not anything hard. You can easily do it and we'll do it today. And then uh, we have, uh, let me just see the next one. Uh, requirements five, six, seven, and eight. What is a common cause of kite failure? This is very important. What would be done when a kite loses, uh, uh, loops around flights? Why is it tail something needed on a kite? No, at least three safety rules. There's like 6 million rules, by the way, guys, uh, but like <laughs> at least three of them try to uh, remember. And, uh, and then we have a, um, uh, what it says, uh, no, least three, uh, know how to correctly uh, wind the line on a stick. Uh, but you can just imagine today, the stick is not anymore in the game. And number 10, make a successful uh, kite uh, and fly, uh, fly uh, some of these, two of them. Okay, guys, here it is. We're gonna start straight away. Okay, the question for everybody, can you please put it in the comments? What was the highest kite? What is the, high, uh, the, the, the highest a kite has ever flown? So what do you think, guys? Is it five meters? Is it 10 meters? Thousand meters, past the cliff? <laughs> wow. Well, let's tell, yeah, anybody, let's share. What, what do you think was the highest flight? I think my highest flight, my highest kite was the one I couldn't see anymore and I lost it. Uh, Pastor yeah. Clifford, uh, this is not a, a so, way yeah. to... 1,000 meters, somebody said. 1,000 meters, excellent, let's go. Who gives more, who gives less? Let me hear this, guys. Is it 1,000 meters? Is it 2,000 meters? Is it 50 meters? 1,000 meters, yes. All right, all right. Somebody there, all right, okay. There's a 4,800 meters. 300 meters, okay, all right. It's the highest, 1,000 meters, 0.54. Very good, very good. 4,879.54. Okay. Very good, very good. Now, another question for you. What is the number of the most kites flown simultaneously? All right, 
Oh. That, that means, for example, Pastor NJ, Pastor Cliff and myself, we fly together. So what would be the number of the most kites flown simultaneously? 7,000. Wow. Wow. Who else? 5,000. Anybody gives more or less? All right. Come and sit. Any, anything well, on the uh, Facebook page, Pastor NJ? Uh, not yet, uh, Pastor not Clifford. Yet. Okay. All yeah. right. So let me not take more time from you. Here it is. 12,350. Here are the answers. So the world record is held by Robert Moore, Australian guy uh, in uh, New South Wales. You can imagine only why, because that's the only country which has that much space that if you crush the uh, 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 kite, which <laughs> has a 4,879 meters long line, nobody's gonna get hurt. So he flew almost five kilometers. Let me just tell you, that is from here to my home. And sometimes it takes me 15 minutes driving, guys. Okay, so 4,800 meters. And guess what? 12,350 uh, uh, kites were flying simultaneously. And, and the beautiful picture comes from, uh, from uh, Palestine. This is Gaza, the Gaza Strip. And, uh, and, and, and kids and everybody took the kites to the sky. And they made just this beautiful, beautiful thing. So, um, uh, my friends, at least now you know two interesting facts oh. about a kite. Now, did you ever fly mm. a kite? Pastor Clifford, Pastor Andre, did you fly a kite ever? Yes, I, I used to love flying kites that were made of uh, nothing but plastic and a few sticks uh, back in Zim. Yes. They were great. They were the best kites in the world. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Clifford, did you fly a kite? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Many. And like I said, many I've just lost. You know, many are lost. Went up in the air and I, you know, disappeared. Yes. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we ended up into the neighbors, ended up into the neighbor's yard, you know, and the neighbor, I had a neighbor, you know, the neighbor's yard and it was a very nasty neighbor, you know, and he wouldn't <laughs> oh, give it no. back to me. He says, how dare you put fire your kite in my yard? <laughs> So uh, some people so, are writing uh, on, on the chat section and somebody says, yes, I flew the kite. Those, some of them are saying, no, I never flew yes, the kite. Yes. So guys, it is never too late to fly yes, a kite. It has you. no restriction on age uh, uh, or anything else. And so today we're going to make some kites, if nothing else. Let me just ask you guys, which, one, which, which of these kites do you like the most? Just put a number in it. Is it one, two, three, four, five? So um, just first have a look. Uh, which one would you like the most? And I will tell you as you're writing hey, in the comment section, I can see people like number, number two, two at the moment. Wow. Number three. Number two. Yeah. All right. Number well, number four somebody favorite. likes. Very good. Number two is winning. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So let me oh, just wow, tell you. look at somebody. Tell me, Pastor Cliff. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so I fly, I, uh, the, the kites that I fly are, are, you, are, are number one, just to let you know. Those are the power kites. Oh, wow. Uh, and those are the ones I have. Uh, the largest kite I have is seven, I, I think it's 7.3 meters is the largest, 7.3. Wow. Usually that is the length of uh, quite a large car, I would say, or even more actually. Yeah. That's the size of the van, I would probably think if not even 7.3 7 meters. Well, the one you like the most, number two, that is a water kite, just to let you know. And they're all beautiful and they all have some kind of purpose. So let's go to the first requirement. Uh, okay, when were the kites first made and flown? And it says here, name at least three uh, ways kites have helped in scientific research and tell how each has affected the world we live in. Tell the story of Benjamin Franklin and his kite. It is obvious that it was, uh, this honor was created in the United States of America, uh, but uh, we will not start with Benjamin Franklin. We're going to start with the first history and then with the Scotsman. Okay, here it is. It says here that it was thought uh, that the earliest use of kite was among Chinese. Uh, is anybody surprised? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised whatsoever. Uh, approximately 2,800 years ago, guys, that means the kites were created before Jesus was born. And the kites were, uh, were said to be invention of the famous 5th century BC Chinese philosopher. I'm wondering what philosopher is doing with the kites, okay? Mozi and Luban, 
by 549 AD. Paper kites were being flown in, in that year. A paper kite was used as a message for the rescue mission. So pathfinders, you know when you're in trouble and you need to call some help. You know, you have yes. a flare gun usually. Well, we don't actually, but you know. <laughs> so, so like in these times you would have to run and then put the kite in the air and hope that somebody's gonna see it to get some help. And there are some pictures guys, uh, some of the first Nisha pictures or, or, or on the top, it says kite flying in, in, in 1766, the kite maker from India, 1845. Uh, uh, there is also the, uh, the kite which carries people in 1908 and then a new modern kites. So here it is. Question for everybody. Did Jesus fly a kite? Oh, wow. Tell me guys. Did Jesus fly a kite? What do you think guys? Because think Jesus would have flown a kite? Kite was invented before Jesus was born. Very soon after, after kite was invented, they're saying that the kites made their way to Middle East. You know, do you think did Jesus fly a kite? Somebody said maybe. That, Somebody's that's brave the... enough and says maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody yeah. said no. no. Somebody says no. What else is there, Pastor Cliff? Well, I just have maybe and no. Uh, I don't know if Pastor, if Pastor NJ had anything there on the Facebook. I think he made and flew them with his dad, somebody said. Okay. Um, we, we've got a probably, no. We've got a no on Facebook. It just says no, no, no. So, no? Is, is some, uh, Jesus is the... All right, all this right. The kite that we're applying. <laughs> yes, yes. So all together, guys, good tries. Uh, bottom line is this. Bible has no reference of Jesus flying kite. But if we go back to that question, we can come to the conclusion Jesus' dad was a carpenter, which meant he had some mm. sticks there for sure. Now the question is, did he manage to find some paper or did he manage to find something else tend to actually, so we do not know that answer, did Jesus fly a kite? But I think it was quite interesting to ask. Bible doesn't say anything about this. All right, here it is. We, we, thought we need to find about three people which made, uh, 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 you know, something with the kites and use kite in scientific research. So here it is, Professor Alexander Wilson. Uh, okay, he comes, I think, from Scotland. Yes, he does. He says for uh, of course, of meteorology. Course. Say, Pastor Andre. Of course, from Scotland. Uh, we, yeah, we know we <laughs> we we knew Scots will use the kites for sure. So if you look, well, if you read his stack, he says that Wilson attached ther thermostats to uh, a number of kites in, in in train, and they flew them on different uh, uh, heights and then discover the different temperatures of the different streams of the air. And you can see some of the kites at the bottom, which we mm. used to be used later on uh, as for the scientific research. Uh, um, I'm wondering guys, um, uh, like about his hairstyle, but that's okay. You know, I, I, you know, I'll think maybe one day when I grow up, I can try to have that hairstyle, but it, I'm not sure. Just, All right, that's the first do you person, think, guys. Put it in. Dan, do you think, uh, you think the ones who, uh, uh, invented the the airplane, for example. Did they perhaps fly kites first to see if it, how 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 it Very good question, like, Pastor Clifford. Yeah. Mm. Very good question, and 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 there will be answered just in two three slides on that one. And here okay, comes the second well person, Benjamin Franklin. Wow, uh, it is. Uh, oh, wow. He, we we know this guy, you know. Uh, in and uh, and this is this is the hairstyle you would have if you were losing hair. Okay. Other guy, the Scotsman, he, he had all <laughs> hair. So this is how you look like with a, when you're losing hair, this is what you look like. All right, so Benjamin Franklin, it's in, you know, he was living in, a, you know, in the 1700s and he is very famous for this. Let me read this. Franklin Kite experiment was performed in Philadelphia in June, 1752. According to account by the uh, Priestley, Frank re realized that the danger of using uh, conductive ro uh, roads and instead used the, uh, conductivity of the wet hemp string attached to a kite. The kite was not uh, struck by the visible lighting, the, uh, the, 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 the publication says. Mm -hmm. Had it been, uh, Franklin would almost certainly have been killed. He moved his hand near the house key that was attached to the string and observed in electric spark, proving that electric nature of the lighting. Wow. So, so guys, if you look at this, um, uh, uh, this, this uh, picture, this diagram, it shows iron point on top of the kite, the silky uh, stuff, and then a rope 
coming down and he attached the key down there, all right? So now let me show you that what really happened. This is what happened. When you see these pictures, you can see that he had a helper there, you know? <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is a helper. So what helper had to do is run with a kite, put it on a height of 3,000 feet, which is almost uh, uh, 1,000 uh, uh, meters. And then he gave to Benjamin Franklin while he was standing underneath, <laughs> underneath the, the, the canopy or the roof so he doesn't get soaked. And then he held it there. And when a striking hit close by, electricity was collected and he was able to see the sparks on the key. In other words, wow. the helper is probably a bigger hero than Benjamin Franklin, but we'll not go that far because he could have died easily because he was running with it. And then you see the first publication of the picture in 1752, how Benjamin Franklin is holding while the helper actually is just sitting down doing nothing. Totally, totally not accurate. He was working so hard. And then we see later on the picture. You see how when you discover something, they almost make you look like, you know, I don't know what, but eh, okay. And now the you. question is this, <laughs> <laughs> who is this guy? And what is he doing here? And his name is Alexander Graham Bell. And what he invented, everybody knows. He invented uh, the, the, the phones and, and look at this is the first versions. And then later on, British put that uh, telephone uh, uh, machine into the beautiful red box. But you would be surprised that Alexander Graham actually himself <clears throat> was very much interested in kites. And Pastor Clifford, to answer your question, he actually mm. used kites. Uh, if, uh, you can read it here. He used kites to further his knowledge of man-assisted flight. In other words, these were the first steps of actually mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to fly. Can you imagine, guys, and this uh, Alexander Graham Bell sometimes even flew in his kites. Uh, and when you see these pictures, you're wondering how it is flying at all. But I can tell you, somehow they managed. Now I have a question for you guys. If you had to choose on which kite would you fly, would you fly on option one or option two? So if you had to choose on which kite you are going to fly, uh, if you remember, 300 feet, 400 feet. Which one would you choose? Would you choose option one or option two? Somebody said option one. Is that right, Pastor Cliff? All right. One. This was my, uh, this is the face. Okay. Oh, oh, two with prayer, somebody said. That's right, people. Yes. This is recreation honor. Number two with lots of. <laughs> two. Two. That's right. That's right. The, uh, uh, the, the kites um, might not talk. Uh, they might not talk about Jesus, but when you're flying yes. in the kite, they definitely bring you close. With support. Uh, because when I found out that people are flying on kites, this, 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 the face of this baby was was my face as well. It seems to me, it seems to me, people are choosing <laughs> option one and two. Well done, well done. So requirement well, two. One we've more. got three. Yes. We've got one. We've got two. We've got none. <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 so, so the reality is that I think I choose uh, uh, probably the nun one as well. But for the sake of being brave today, I would probably choose option two, yes. by the way. <laughs> probably two. Here it is. Requirement two. Name some of the ways the kites might be used today. And now let me just uh, quickly give you the answer on the first part, which is, hey, how did they improve today's world, the kites? And you, you, you find out. We found the ways to fly through the experiments with the, the kites, but we also used some meteorological research. And also in the midst of this, we found out that, uh, that Franklin managed to discover the static electricity, how it functions and how maybe it can be transmitted. So the requirement number two, okay, name some of the ways the kites are you being used today and you might be just blown away. Why? Because kites, <laughs> found new ways. Here it is. Today, the kites are being used, believe or not, are actually at the moment uh, uh, for the transport. And if you look this ship, the, this is the name, uh, Beluga Project. Uh, this is a heavy, a heavy um, cargo ship which carries containers. And what happened is this, uh, they came to conclusion, and this, this project was actually sponsored by the UK as well. Uh, they came to conclusion that in the old days, ships used to move really fast. 
really, really fast just using the sales. And then what happened next was they said now came to the conclusion that kites can produce even more power. And because of that, they decided to attach a kite on the front part of the ship and then it will be pulled. And this is the result of it. Watch this, guys. He says that a kite, which is 600 square meters, can actually bring the saving on fuel 10 to 35% on this Beluga project's ship. In other words, they can save uh, 270,000 pounds every year just on fuel. Uh, for everybody who is watching this uh, around UK, you know the houses are very expensive. And, and for those who are watching from abroad, I can tell you this is approximately a price you can buy a house almost everywhere in the UK except the southern part. And so, so you, they will be saving a one house. And, and the way this would function is it would have the control tower at the back and they will have a robotic arm at the front and then they will position the kite in order to move the ship as fast as possible. Now, here comes a, a, a second way, and that is the wind energy kites. And let me just point about this, guys. Uh, you all know about the you know, normal turbines of offshore, which we see all around. Of course, unless you're somebody who lives inland, there is no uh, offshore turbines, but you will still see the land turbines. So um, there are a couple of people which uh, uh, mentioned they hate them. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> Uh, uh, one of them being Trump, uh, and, and especially he said he hates them in Scotland. Uh, uh, <laughs> he, and, and the reason why he said is they are really ugly, but this is what is really happening. This thing can actually produce electricity by lifting this kite as far as possible, and then this will be totally out of sight. Let me just see for a moment I will be able to watch this uh, video, uh, Pastor Cliff, uh, let me know, do we have a sound? found out the third purpose of the kites today being used, and that is uh, simply uh, a recreation. So if you look at this guy on the bottom left corner, that picture, well, that usually was me. I, I don't live close to beach anymore, but I, I fly power kites, and the power kites, they, they just simply, you know, explains what they, they produce a lot of power. The one thing I haven't done is this thing, this guy on the right-hand side, that's called uh, a buggy, uh, 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 power, uh, power kite buggy boarding, buggy boarding, that's right. This is a three-wheeler which you actually steer with your legs and then you use your arms actually to move it uh, where it needs to be. Here it is guys, uh, 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 the few more uh, recreational things. That looks like a lot of fun. It, it is a lot of fun uh, as long as you actually survive the strong gusts of the wind. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. <laughs> this is a, uh, um, these are a few more sports that you can do. 
And also, a kite's a very good way to get rid of your friends. Do you give them a kite? <laughs> the kite into the power window, which is a window where the wind is the strongest, and they're definitely going to disappear. I can tell you that for sure. Here it is. Yes. Another way. Like the, eject, like the eject button on a plane, isn't it? That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Snow kiting. This is the way you can actually do, uh, uh, you can move on a snowboard or skis. Uh, but let me just tell you, uh, these pictures look really nice, but you really don't want to be there because if it's windy and it's cold, mm. it's a terrible place to be, guys. And so, uh, so this is just one of the sports I never tried and I will never try. But you need to know that sometimes um, in the cold areas, they use kites to move the cargo across the, uh, across the across the ice as well mm. and the kite surfing the kite you like the most this is a yes. special kite you can see it's inflated it has an inflatable tube so if it lands in the water you'll be able easily to recover it because if normal kites mm. land in the water it gets soaked it's too heavy and can't take off and so this inflatable mm. tube actually allows it to be uh, uh, taken <laughs> out off from the water. Pastor Day and you, you visited South Africa, Cape Town. Did they take you to this place? This place, uh, they call it uh, uh, Bloberg Strand, where there's a lot of this happening. Actually, it's like a, hundreds of them. Yes. I don't know if they've taken you there? No, no, Pastor Cliff, they haven't taken me okay. there. But as I was being driven through a Cape Town, a little bit further outside, we actually saw some people doing kite surfing, and it's just amazing sport. Just yes. like so the, there's a place yeah. yes so the third the third this is the, th the the second requirement explain now the third requirement please explain briefly how the kite fly <laughs> uh, um, it's like it's like tell me how the bird flies well it has wings and flaps but the reality is despite something so simple <laughs> actually it is quite complicated uh, and, and and but this is probably the easiest way to explain and the reason I way to explain is this there needs to be there needs to be a tension always between the kite and the person who controls the kite that's the number one rule number two is there needs mm. to be the angle of attack in other words it has to always be under the wow. angle number three is that simply the wind has to flow underneath it which will produce the trust of the kite and then you can look, watch the drag and the lift and all other things the bottom line, despite it's looking very simple, it's really not. So maybe the best way to show you how this is uh, being done in, in, in a closed environment, which is the most difficult environment to fly in the kite, is just have a look at this uh, video with me. And because the video has no sound, it comes from the Smithsonian uh, National Air, uh, Museum. Here it is. Uh, if you just see this person who is flying the kite, it, first of all, it doesn't even look like uh, that there is string. Mm. It looks like that there is just two metal wires and he just moves them left and right. But that's not the case. He actually has uh, two strings, in, in fact, four strings. And he is constantly walking left and right and spinning around. You're wondering why, <coughs> why stand there? And the simple reason, he always has to have the tension in his strings. If he stops moving, the tension goes, the kite goes down. Also very important thing is <laughs> this, my friends, can you see how he's constantly spinning him up and down, left and right? And why is that necessary? For the very simple reason, because when you stop moving the kite, kite loses the tension again and collapses, and that's a kite failure. And so when you watch this guy, it doesn't even look real for somebody who flies kites. I can't fly the kite outside sometimes on a windy day, and this guy is flying inside where there is no wind. And what he's doing, he's producing the movement and producing the air going underneath the kite so that, so that uh, he can fly. And this is mm. just absolutely unbelievable. This is a professional uh, when it comes to flying kite. One day, uh, when I grow up, I will be able to fly a kite like this indoors. All right, so here it is. For everybody who was just like, oh, that was too simple. Well, here it is. Take NASA's formula of how the kites fly. <laughs> uh, that's exactly uh, literally my face when I saw the formula of the NASA, uh, you know, how kites fly. Yeah, that's it. You know, you break these down because I cannot. This is actually the formula. Now, requirement four. We're not going to go very, 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 very. My moment. Yes, yes, yes. All right. 
Here it is. Define the following terms. Spine, spa, vent, uh, bowstring, cover, frame, trail or tail, keel, flying line, bridle and reel. All right, so here it is, guys. Let's just for a moment talk about spine, guys. Uh, everybody has a spine, at least I hope, uh, because for those, yeah, 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 because it's not good without spine because you can't fly kite for sure in this one as well. So the spine is the one which goes in the middle. And the reason I have a picture on the right hand side is if you're using something for the spine of the kite, I just wanna ask you to make sure it is light and the edges or the top and the bottom of the spine is actually protected or actually really nicely sanded away. Why? Because when a kite comes down in a high speed, if this thing hits somebody, it can really badly hurt somebody. So this is the spine, all right. And now here comes other parts. You can see, uh, okay, spine, you can see uh, frame, spa, cover, flying line, reel, tail, and bridle. I just want to encourage you, if you have your worksheet with you, if you would like to just like for a few moments, just flip the page, take a pen quickly, just draw this um, kite quickly. And it's very simple. You know, you would know what tail is, you would know what the spine is. So if you just want to jot down these things, but if you're watching this later, it's going to be very easy to, for you to uh, uh, identify. All right. <clears throat> Let me just show you. Um, uh, uh, okay. All right. Requirement five. What is coming? Uh, common cause of the kite failure. Uh, uh, the question uh, I can write in the comment section, but I can tell you guys that uh, uh, you will not be surprised. Uh, here it is. Number one is lack of the wind. Uh, if there is no wind, you can't fly the kite. I tried. It doesn't work. I even had my friend use the wind blower. You know, the thing that you blow the leaves. Mm. I even had my friend stand behind me with this massive blowing the air. And somehow in all of this, we were not <laughs> able to fly the kite. All right. So number one, there is, uh, the problem is uh, if there is no uh, uh, wind. Number two, it's a too strong wind. If the wind is too strong, actually, it can really keep your kite down on earth or sometimes becomes extremely dangerous. So that's second failure. The third is trees or other objects causing turbulence. So when you're flying the kite, sometimes the wind hits the object and changes the, uh, the wave or how the air goes, and that can cause the, uh, the kite to come down very quickly. An essential uh, part of the... Um, Kite is uh, number four, is actually broken or the line is a snap. So that is what can cause. So please put it that in your worksheets. So lack of the wind, the too strong wind, you see uh, the trees or other objects causing turbulence or essential part of the kite go. And, and I never had the last one happen to me, by the way, uh, but I had the first three. So, and the last one is a human factor. Uh, a lack of, uh, you, know, I, you know, IQ, I would say, is like, you know, majority of the time I crashed my kite was because I just did not pay attention enough. And, and I will say human factor is probably the biggest failure uh, uh, when it comes to a failure of the kites. Requirement number six, let me just tell you, there's only 10 requirements. And we're going to finish this quickly because guys, it's a long day. If it's possible for everyone to keep the microphone muted, that'd be great as well. Tina, thank you. And now we have a requirement six. What should be done when a kite loops during the flight? Hey, guys, I cannot give you the answer on this one. Why? Because this honor was produced in 1986 uh, when majority of kites had a one line. All right? I, I flew the kite with a one line, uh, Pastor Cliff probably as well, and Pastor NJ. Uh, but at the same time, uh, now kites have two lines and four lines, and some of them even have a five lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how can we just maybe say that, uh, for example, what should be done when a kite loops during the flight, if it's a one line, you can kind of pull a little bit to stabilize it, okay? Uh, uh, if it's two lines, you can actually, if it's spinning on the right hand side, then you pull the left line to unspin it, and that way you can actually uh, uh, prevent it from totally tangling. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens with the four lines and five lines as well. You are able to actually control it to the point that that you can kind of unloop it. So number six, it's a little bit hard to define because the honor itself was not very specific on which kite it was mentioned. Requirement seven, 
why oh, so there, there's somebody there's somebody says there's somebody says if it goes in circles pull the cord and run slower is that any that you think Pastor Cliff? Is it going in circles, pull the cord and run slower, somebody said. I, I, I would go with that advice. I would go with that advice. Okay. Pastor NJ, did you, can you agree on that one as well? You full kites? Uh, well, uh, I'll just mention the comments here, you know, because mine was just one string and there was uh, very little to do with pulling. You'd break the little uh, <laughs> piece of wood that was holding it. But someone here says, wrong angle of attack and improper bridal uh, adjustment wow we have professionals there and that's mm -hmm. right guys it, 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 your your comment pastor angie just defined um uh, 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 uh this second requirement why is still something needed on a kite uh, and that just yes. perfectly okay, explains no. pastor cliff you wanted to say something i think pastor cliff is the question and I was going to ask about it seems to me uh, it seems to me um, that, that Pastor Cliff has problems with the okay. connection are you there uh, now? yeah I can hear you now Pastor Cliff yes yeah, I said that was the question I was going to ask somebody asked there was, why on earth do you need a tail for the wow. kite yes. well if you look at these kites here on the pictures you come to conclusion you need a tail because they are beautiful hmm because when the kite fly, it can spin the tail or it can really make it look beautiful. But what exactly is the comment which came from Pastor Angie, Facebook friend, which we thank you for the comment, is exactly correct. This uh, tail actually gives a proper angle of attack. The tail has mm. to be adjusted. And this is how you stabilize the one string kite. So thank you so much for that, uh, Pastor Angie, Pastor Cliff, for confirming. So, so Pastor Dayan, does it depend on the length? Plus, does it depend on the length of the tail? Does that make a difference, the length of the tail? The uh, length of the tail makes a difference. Sometimes okay. if the tail is too heavy, it's not good. Uh, uh, so, so in other words, if you look at this man who is flying the kite with the tail, he has a really long one. But look at his kite. That is a delta kite. And those yes. kites fly very, on a very strong winds. In other words, this kite can easily pull it. And, and he can do a beautiful choreography with his kite. So it is important to balance the kite. You see, trying to uh, fly a kite without a tail may result in kite spinning and rolling a lot because the kite is unstable. Adding a tail to kite helps make it fly more stable by adding some needed weight and drag on its um, lower end. All mm -hmm. right, now we know why we need the tail. Please write it down in your uh, uh, answer sheets. Number eight requirement. Here it is. Know at least three safety rules. Uh, uh, for kite flying. I'm going to first take you to the section of what we need to do. All right, do section. Here it is. Do. Be aware of where you are. All right. It's like, make sure you mm -hmm. check around yourself first. Look left, right, up and down because you need to make sure. Fly the, uh, 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 what, uh, if there is uh, ever any question of safety, fly the kite in another location or just different day. Always keep, okay. Always keeps a safe distance between other flyers. Let me just tell you why this is important. Because the, uh, the kite tangle. Okay, that's number one. And sometimes, actually, you can hurt each other. If the line goes across the face of other flyer, which can happen, you can cut him easily. All right, guys? Because the kites mm -hmm. I fly, one string can lift up to 100 kilos. And I have four strings. Uh, that's 1.2 tons. If that line hits somebody, it can hurt them. If your cut uh, becomes uh, tangled in the power line, leave it there. Notify the utility of, of, of this area to come and uh, sort it out. All right? And avoid uh, kite eating trees. I don't know, can you see it behind the picture of Pastor Clifford or myself? But there is a tree <laughs> kite. Oh, yes. Do you know what trees do? They can't wait for your kite. And when you hit the, the tree with the kite, they, they actually start munching. And, and you are sitting there and crying as the tree eats your kite and then it giggles. That's right, never, <laughs> never fly too close to trees. Because I'm I... afraid that has been a lot of my experience, Pastor Day. <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> Pastor NJ, what happened to your kite? Any tree ate it? Yes, we had some very hungry trees that ate many kites. And uh, you know, getting the, the, the string and getting the, um, 
the actual material was very difficult for us uh, growing up in Zim. So you really didn't like those trees that ate the kites. And everybody would think that the trees are hungry in South Africa or Zim. Man, trees were hungry in Serbia as well. And guess what? English trees are the hungriest kite trees that I know. I lost as well a few of them there. So my friends, here it is what not to do. Pam, Pam Catchpole says, first got eaten by a horse. <laughs> oh, that never happened to me. No, I've, that, that is a very angry horse. That horse needs to go and have counseling for kite issues. Yeah, that's right. All right. So what don't, you know, don't do, guys. Fly, don't fly ne next to power line. All right. If you remember the story of Benjamin Franklin, if, if, do you remember what happened? The lighting mm -hmm. did not even mm -hmm. hit the kite and he got electricity on the line. All lines would transfer electricity. If you're close to the power line, you can get yourself electrocuted. Believe me, guys. And so make sure never fly close to the power lines. Number two, fly, don't fly near cars. Now you're wondering why. What car has to do with a kite? But let me tell you what. When you fly the kite, actually, <laughs> it really is distracting. Did you know that in England, has, there's a law that you can't have a billboard which uh, 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 have moving pictures on it? Do you know why? Because it's very distracting to the drivers. Yeah. When you fly the kite, the dr uh, driver can look up the kite and hit somebody and hurt somebody. Okay, so never fly next to a car. Why as well? Another thing, this is the worst case scenario. This, is a, this, this would probably happen to me if I would do it. If you fly this, you can distract the driver. Your kite can actually uh, go down in front of the car. The driver can hit somebody and hurt somebody and then drag you and hurt you. So never fly close to the big roads because it is very dangerous. Also, never fly to airports. But also, but also pass it, yeah. Yes, pass the cliff, yes. I was just gonna say with cars, you know, also when you fly a kite, you're always looking at the kite. So you're not looking down. So you're not even watching out for cars or anything that's moving. That's, that's, right. With it. that's right, 100%. And now the next one, please do not fly next to airports. You, do you know why? Because if mm -hmm. I hear on the BBC News that there is a Pathfinder flying kite next to Heathrow Airport, <laughs> I will have personally to find you and remove the badge from the Pathfinder on it. Because, <laughs> because it's really dangerous. You cannot fly kites next to airports, big or small, all right, guys? It doesn't have to be Heathrow or anything else. Just don't fly next to airports. And then don't fly in stormy weather or when a storm is approaching. Uh, let me just tell you, Pastor Dan, your friend uh, was uh, one so unwise that he decided to fly the kite before the storm came because I thought it's going to be fun. Uh, let me just tell you what happened. Uh, I, I, I pulled the kite, I prepared the kite, I took off, and the wind took me and my kite, and I flew about four meters in the air, and then I flew about 15 meters straight, and then I landed on wow. a football field uh, 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 with a lot of grass on myself, uh, uh, scratched, and I was really hurting. Flying the kites in front of the storm or during the strong wind is not advisable. Many people have died because of this, because they just ignored the big dark clouds. All right, guys, these are don'ts. Remember, you, you just need to know three of them, but you uh, have plenty of them there. Requirement now, know how to go, uh, correct a uh, 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 wine line on a, a stick. It, it's obviously, it's 18, uh, 1986. It's these days, there is a proper handle. And know how to tie a broken end uh, together with the fisherman knot. So what I'm going to do is I will show you guys uh, uh, some advice from the professionals. So let's watch it. So this is how to wind our kite string or kite line. So the kite line. Uh, before we, uh, before we uh, uh, watch this, I just want to point out that this man has a four line kite, all right? Which get tangled much easier. If you have a one line kite, it, the principle would be the same, okay? But with less lines. So let's do it. So this is how to wind our kite string or kite line. So the kite lines are the parts that are running from your handles up to the kite. We want to pack them up really nicely so that next time we go out, they're not in a massive tangle. So the easiest way to do it, grab all four lines like this. Just let your kite killers hang loose to start with. And we're gonna do figure of eight around the handles. And that's the best way 
to keep them tidy so you don't get too many tangles. So you can see it's crossing in the centre here. We're not going round and round the handles because the problem with going round and round is that every time you've done each loop, that's put a spiral into the line. So next time you go to set up, you've got lots and lots of tangles in your line. So figure of eights like this, all the way along the lines, up until we get to the kite. So what you'll probably find is you're always going to hold the handles with one hand and the lines with the other. And then when you go to set up your kite again, do it exactly the same. So I'm holding the handles with my right hand and winding with my left hand. So when I go to unravel, what I'm going to do is the opposite. So I'm going to hold the hands with the right hand and unravel with my left hand. So it's just the opposite. All right, so now you saw it. The principle is same for the one kite. Just make sure that you always hold the line in one hand and the, and the stick or the, the uh, uh, so let me just show you the, what we use at the, the moment these days. These are the, uh, you know, flying lion sets uh, which come with this plastic thing and you always do it in figure of eight. The reason why you want to do these guys is because it can kill your love for the kites. Do you know mm. why? Because if the line tangles up, Pastor Angie, Pastor Cliff, do you remember when your line tangled up? It's like a two hour process yeah. to untangle it and you just don't want to fly it anymore. <coughs> so what you want to do is, <coughs> exactly like this man said, take in one hand and always do the same principle. If it's a right hand, the stick, then the left hand, the line, or opposite. You need to always, and then you will do exactly opposite way to prepare the kite for flying. Very important step, otherwise you might not love your kite anymore after this. All right, guys. And now how to repair uh, if the line snaps with the fisherman knot, uh, one more video for you. So here to tie here. a double fisherman's, you want to bring the two ends of the rope together so that they overlap. Then hold the end of one rope in your fist with your thumb over the rope. Wrap the working end of the other rope over your thumb, bring it under, and wrap it fully over again to form an X. Then slide your thumb out, feed the rope through the X you just formed, and pull the knot tight. You should see an X on one side, and two parallel strands on the other side, with the other rope inside the knot. Now pull the other rope through so you have enough slack to work with and repeat the process. Form an X over your thumb and push the end of the rope through the X. You'll end up with two knots and two strands of rope between them. You can dress the individual knots by pulling them tight and then pull the outer ropes to bring the knots together. The finished bend should have two X's on one side and four parallel strands on the other. Make sure that both ropes have plenty of tail. Now you know how to fix it. And don't be, you know, don't panic. Oh, pastor, I haven't seen it yet. If you need to do this again, this will be on the YouTube, on the Facebook. Just rewind it back again and you will see it. Fisherman Knot is not very difficult and you can see how uh, uh, quite easily this man, okay, this man's professional, but it's not that bad to make it for anybody, guys. All right? And here it is. Okay, the last requirement. We're going to finish here quickly. He says, make and, uh, uh, okay, make and successfully fly two of the following kites. All right? This is the best part you actually going to produce this flying machine despite not having engine or whatever it is. This can be your moment. And let me just tell you, uh, uh, from all of these kites, I went on YouTube and I found the links. The majority of the boys who made these kites, they really use almost nothing to make it. In other words, you don't have to go to shop to buy it. You just have to go actually to your mom and dad recycling bin probably and find everything there so, so that you don't have to spend any money on this. Of course, if you want to buy a kite, you can do it. Some of them are not expensive, some of them are. But reality is, you can make this from almost nothing. So here it is. Uh, tetrahedral kite, eddy kite, uh, sled kite, flat kite, two stick diamond kite, delta wing kite, or fox kite. So these are the options. You need to make two of them. And I'm sure you will, because uh, if you make, uh, if you fulfill, the most beautiful kite uh, will be getting this pin. And let me just tell you, I, I want to make a kite to get this pin right now. Uh, that's correct. Mm -hmm. eh, so here it is. Tetra uh, Hydriel kite. This is how it looks like. And in case you would like to actually uh, uh, make this kite, all you have to do is scan this code, which will take you to the YouTube link, and it will take you step by step. Actually, for me, this is probably the most complicated kite. But it mm. looks very beautiful, and I would love to make it one day. So this will be probably my mission to make the heavier kite. All right, number, kite number two, which you have option, uh, is Eddy kite. All right, here is the plan on the right hand side behind past, uh, my picture, uh, past the cliff picture, whoever is now on, on 
and you will see the measurements you will see a little bit of explanation of step by step this is not a difficult kite let me just ask you pastor cliff and pastor Andrew, did you make this kite yes that's probably the most common one yes i made. did yes yes true and, and 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 i'm assuming that uh, after flying a few times you find a way to tweak it to make it better is that right yes well, yes. if it survived. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's true if it survived. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, okay, sled kite. Listen, guys, when you see this kite on this picture, you would say, wow, I will never be able to make this kite. Let me just tell you, the boy who made this kite, and if you go scan this link, you'll realize the, all the boy used was a couple of sticks and plastic bag guys everybody has a plastic bag in other oh. words this guy probably uh, 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 despite this kind of beautiful look might become actually the easiest to make so if you are wondering which one i'll go for eddies and slide kite because they look to me the easiest to make so just later on scan this uh, barcode and it will take you directly to uh, a play uh, to the video that will teach you how to do it step by step and then we have um uh, a two stick diamond kite, very similar to Eddie's kite, by the way, you will, if you look this, but uh, there are a few differences and certainly uh, why not have a go with this as well. And then Delta kite, for me, this is the one I flow, uh, the one on top right corner. They're not very expensive, but I will still ask you, don't be, don't be lazy, just, just make your kite. It's so much mm. more fun and it's so much more rewarding rather than just going getting one. If you make a kite, you can see on the left hand side uh, uh, two kites which are made and you have some instructions here about the size that you can use to make a Delta kite. Once again, don't worry too much. This video is available for you to rewind and also it will be on YouTube probably even tonight so you can find these measurements for you. And then comes the Fox kite. I think this is just a show off kite. Ooh, I'm not, not cool. going to make this kite. It looks beautiful, yeah. right, Cliff? You're right, uh, but uh, but I actually <laughs> I, would, I want to make sled kite at the moment. That's that's a, that's a, that's that's what I want to make. So here it is, a uh, uh, video again how you can make a uh, all again made out of nothing, guys. Majority of people who fly kites today are the kids uh, which do not have iPhones, or they do not have yes. tablets, or do not have maybe too many too much TV time. They fly kites because this is one of the ways to enjoy and it's just amazing way. All right. Now the question is for you guys, which one would you like to make? Which one? Just use, just use one of these words. So which one would you like to make guys for your uh, completed honor? Would you mind to make tetrahedral, Eddie's kite, slide kite, two stick, diamond kite, delta wing kite or fox kite? All right. We have some people who already started writing. Pastor, uh, Pastor Cliff, what is there? Fox. Sled Fox. Delta. Mm. It seems to me the, the sled Fox is winning. Kite. Seems to me the sled and the fox ones are, <laughs> are the... Uh, uh, sled and fox. Excellent. Guys, are we look forward to seeing... So, so Pastor Dan, yes. the, 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 the image on the, on the honor badge, yes. what kind of a kite is that then? Uh, Pastor Cliff, uh, if you remember the very early stages of the kites, this is the yeah. kite from 1800s. Uh, what do you call that? What, I'm just asking, what would you call I that? actually don't know the name of the kite, no. okay. but this is like from 1800s kite. This is the kite which was used a lot for the uh, mm. experimentation. So this is the kite that they would attach the thermostats and send them up. So uh, I have no clue. I did not see anywhere the name of this kite, but you're right. So actually, everybody Find is- Find a YouTube to uh, make that one. Yeah, if you can. Everybody is, uh, somebody says it's a box kite. Thank you, Pam. If it's a box kite, I will Google it. So it's a box kite. Guys, uh, please send us the pictures of your kites. Again, there is a pin yeah. to be one and we'll ship it to you guys this, uh, this week. All the pictures go on Wednesday. And so please send us, send us by Wednesday some kites. You have tomorrow a little bit of time. And before school starts, of course. All right. Okay, so we've got sled, uh, sled and uh, box kites um, uh, being uh, favored here on uh, Facebook. And I, I have to tell you this one, guys. Uh, it, it, it came from, um, from, from Mike. Uh, 
um, sorry, Mel, Mel Hickman. Yeah. Uh, it, this is how he described uh, um, um, the flying a kite. He presented, by the way, the feeding on uh, some time ago. Yes. He says a, mm. a kite is something that lets you play with the wind and touch the sky. I thought that was cool. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks, Natalie. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, mm, so, well here it is. Just for the sake of those who will be watching the video, in case to just double check your requirements once again. I won't read them again, guys, because there is no need. Uh, uh, you will be able to mm. do this later on. This is just for the YouTube guys to pause the video here and just to double check the honor requirements. But the bottom line is, is this. I just want to stop sharing uh, uh, the screen because um, here it is. Uh, stop sharing. Guys, now you're wondering, you know, God was not mentioned too much in this honor. Uh, it's a recreational honor. And, uh, but I want to tell you this. Uh, the reason I fly kites is uh, because I actually have to have a purpose to be outdoors. So if it's camping, I have a purpose. If it's this, I have a purpose. If I have no purpose, I don't want to go outside, but I'm like, I'm happy inside. My couch is too soft. But when I take a kite outside, guys, it like wakes me up and I love it. And another thing which I love about it is it takes me to God's nature. Despite the eat, eat the tree eating kites, uh, kites eating trees or whatever it is, guys, despite all of this, it's just amazing place to fly. Feeling the wind, and as Mike said, it's truly amazing to feel and play the, with the wind. And the last thing, and I just want to tell you this, uh, only uh, power kites would know this. When the wind takes the kite, your power kite, and mm. when lift the man, I'm almost 100 kilos, and lifts me off the ground for two, three meters in the air, and you have to hold, you feel what, what power God has. For me, I'm like, this is the moment I'm like, I understand the Bible says, you know, God is God of love, but God is this God who created all of this and truly gives me the picture of how powerful this God who loves you and loves me is. Uh, so my friends, I hope you enjoyed the uh, Pathfinder Kite on them. And if you're an adventurer, make sure you actually check because we already done uh, Build and Fly Honor with Alberto on this YouTube channel or this Facebook. And by God's grace, see mm. you next Sabbath for the e-honors. Yeah.